I'm just so blessed and happy to be healthy and mm. alive right now. Um, so why am I stressing and pushing myself too much? It was almost like um, I was pressuring myself to be like, you should be here, you should mm. be there. And I think just having that moment to reflect, be on a beach, <laughs> uh, and just be like, well, this is great. I feel very at peace. When I came back to London, I was like, you know what? I'm in a new like space. I'm in a new kind of... Um, energy mm. and uh yeah that was a turning point mm. and then boom 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 commercial started coming through um opportunities and stuff and i just and i think i just like to enjoy things more and stop putting a lot of pressure so hello everyone hope you're doing well um yes this we are back i know we have been on pause but we are back with a new name in the new year with a new guest speaker. So as you may have seen on Instagram or on LinkedIn, we've changed our name for our main series. Originally, you know, it was just called Pick Up The Mic, but we are now calling it The Student Guide. And then dot, 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 with dot, dot, dot. Um, so yeah, so welcome to The Student Guide. Um, we're going to be talking about some interesting topics today, but we're going to start off by introducing our guest speaker. Now, this guest speaker is a is a good, good friend of mine, a good... Good, yeah. It's been it's been a while since we we've met in person, but, but blame COVID. Yeah, that's the thing. But uh, it's an amazing guest speaker, um, and we'll get into a bit more because I don't. I, I've got I've got things lined up to say, but I don't want to go 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 too quickly. So I'm going to ask Amanda. Could you just introduce yourself to our audience? Yes. Um. My name is Amanda Shudeko. I'm from North London, and I'm also an actor. Um. And yeah, I've been acting since I was 16. Uh, so quite quite a bit now, um, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no! It's an amazing introduction. Amazing introduction. Now there might be some people watching, and they might be like, "I know this person because I've seen her, seen her in some adverts." Um, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be that guy to to, sh- oh, to give a few shout-outs because uh, we can't, we can't ignore the fact you did an advert with Idris Elba. Is, oh yeah, is <laughs> is that not is that not correct? That yeah, that is correct. But I. I to be fair, I was more a writer okay. on it, okay. like a co-writer. Basically, the director, Henry uh, Schofield, he um, was, you know, helping, you know, create the the actual advert and everything. Mm. And um, I had worked with him before, ages ago. And mm. so basically, Idris and uh, Sabrina were doing like this new Audible kind of um, podcast, kind of like this. <laughs> um, and he kind of just wanted to make it sound a bit more like... I don't know, a little interesting, a little mm. less like we're trying to sell you this mm. podcast and more like, why don't you come watch? Yeah. Um, so yeah, literally it was like the Monday and we were like filming on, I want to say the Friday or the Saturday. Oh, um, and he was like, you know, can you just help me like add some bits to it and stuff? So we like every night we're on Zoom, mm. um, just trying to make it sound better and even, um, yeah, just trying to imagine like, how would Idris help us? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, and then I was like, it got to Wednesday, I was like, I've got to ask the question. I've got to do it. It's like Henry. Um, can I just be beaten? The commercial. <laughs> I was like, I will be the chair. This concert, men laughing us. I was like, I'll even be cup holder for Sabrina. Okay. Um, and then he was like, Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Da, da, da. Yeah. And then literally, before you know, a few days ago, like, yes, the cast can come at this time. Da, da, da. They got to like be in it for like mm. a few seconds, but I was primarily like primarily um writer on it uh, but which is really great really yeah. cool they're super fun but it's like my first proper like writing um credit mm-hmm. um so yeah which is interesting because i yeah i never kind of thought i'd go into i've written a few bits but never anything like professional whatever mm-hmm. um but yeah it was a great experience okay it's great and even got a picture as well you got a picture as well <laughs> i was like i cannot leave here without this picture for the gram <laughs> Anyway, uh, but yeah, which is great. It was wow. So uh, what you're saying is, if if we're if we're looking to get Idris on the podcast, no. you're the person that we should be speaking to. No, I don't know all about that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I know a guy. You know a guy. I know the guy. <laughs> And I like Robert Tight, so I feel like I could because he did um the music video, um you know you know the bit where Idris is like um um. Something tell Megan and Harry like mm. the, I can't remember it's a, it's a there's a song okay. and he directed that song so, oh. Oh. Huh? so by six degrees of separation <laughs> I'm also tight with both of them 
So, yes. <laughs> oh, perfect. Well, uh, yeah. Who knows? We might we might have Idris on the podcast. We might have Idris on the you podcast. You never know. You never know. You never know. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's get started with our first question. Um, you know, you spoke about you got into acting at sixteen. Um, what what inspired you to get into acting? Was it always the dream? Yeah, I think I think so. I feel like um, I always knew. I know some kids don't really know mm. what they want to do, but I think I I knew. I used to watch a lot of um, like daytime TV. Mm-hmm. I was watching um, Diagnosis Murder and things like that. You're really like you're soaps, so dramatic, <laughs> you know, soaps from it, you know, overseas and stuff. And I think I really enjoyed doing it. And I remember mm-hmm. at school like really enjoying being um, in plays and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, I'm an only child, so. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to like find ways to entertain yourself. Mm. And I think that was a way that I would like entertain myself and mm. have fun. And I was very talkative at school. I remember um, at primary school, my teacher put in the report. Amanda would do really well if she would just listen more. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. Well, now I'm like, okay. Um, but yeah, it was always kind of in there. And I think um, when I got to sixth form mm. is when we had the chat. You know, the chat, like, um, do you remember? Okay. Am I allowed to say yeah, that? Yeah, you can say Do you remember Miss Mitchell? Yeah. She came over. Yeah. So we all had, like, a meeting. She went to get to know everyone in terms of, like, what their, um, what's it called? What they wanted to do yeah. in life. Um, and she was like, okay, Amanda, so, you know, what, what have you done? Um, what do you want to do? Sorry. And I was like, yeah, I want to be an actor. And she was like, what have you done? I was like, <laughs> and she was like you know from what i know from acting you've got to have done like something you know you've got to like try and get yourself in mm. there so from that point it was like the heavens had opened <laughs> and like, god had like totally where to go um i auditioned for radio youth company wow. first of all um which is a very great school mm. but this is kind of like a saturday school that you should do i think you had to be 16 to 20 mm. um and it was like every saturday and you just do classes and it felt like a foundation course in that okay. thing uh, when i look back at, at, at it now um and so i kind of started doing that i got in thankfully nice. um which is actually a friend who told me to do it. Do you remember Corinne? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. So I don't know why I'm whispering. Do you remember <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm like, <laughs> but she, I remember she, I don't know if she remember this, but she was like, oh man, I'm auditioning for this thing. Okay. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Um, yes. So, you know, I did. And then at the same time, um, there was an open call. Uh, the Shakespeare Globe were looking for 12 to 16 year olds okay. to be part of a young company of actors, kind of similar to like, Back in the day, say back in the day, like during Shakespearean times when they had um, like young actors mm. um, called like the boy players, I think, because you you couldn't be a woman to to be in like a company of actors then. Um, and yeah, it was like three rounds of auditions. Mm-hmm. I remember looking for a monologue and it was like just terrible and wet. So I was <laughs> like, I'm going to write my A. Okay. <laughs> Oh, wow. So that was like the same time. Okay. Um, so it felt like I was getting because it's like Shakespeare Globe and Ryan, mm. great for Shakespeare, great for just honing your skills. Mm. Um, which meant that I got to do a play at the Sam Wanamaker Playhouse nice. in the inaugural season. Um, nice. and then also at Radio Company, we got to do a play um in their theatre. We did Julius Caesar and I got to play um Julius Caesar as well. So that was nice. great, but it was just really good for me to kind of um buy my talents, like mm. you know, hone them in, like. You know, when you discover you have a talent or, or something, you need to kind of like practice it, perfect mm-hmm. it, and all that kind of stuff. And that was the opportunity to to do it, um, which was which was great. It was so much fun, and I got to that during sixth form. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, I really didn't do well in my A levels at that time, but I remember <laughs> <laughs> okay because I was doing what I really loved, mm-hmm. um, and then from there. I took a I, so I did it in what's it AS and then yeah. A2 is the second one forgotten already yeah, my, no, that's uh, no, <laughs> it's been so long um, and then in A2 I started working um, at Waitrose to afford to pay for like mm. drum school auditions because I remember at the time like one school could be like 50 quid 80 quid oh, yeah. and I was like listen I don't like own a bank in my house I've got to work for this money um, so I did that and then I auditioned for Mount View, which mm-hmm. is a drama school, which is now in Peckham. Mm-hmm. Um, and luckily again, got in. It's all kind of been on luck. Mm. God, luck. Yes. Um, <laughs> you believe in. Um, it all kind of seemed to, you know, happen, you know, at the right time. Mm. And I got in, got into Mount View, did a three-year acting course, which was amazing. Mm. Um, 
and yeah just help me be the actor I am today and um you know not everyone needs to go and wants to go into training but for me it was what I needed so my arm just clicked no. uh, what I needed to to um to kind of progress because mm. I before I was 16 I didn't really have the money to do like acting classes on the mm-hmm. side and stuff like that and um you know do like dance stuff and like singing lessons like it just wasn't a thing for me and like doing drama at school was like the thing so getting to actually do the training I was just so happy to do because it's like finally <laughs> and also because I remember our school was very much like Oxford Cambridge Oxford Cambridge and I was like hell <laughs> I was like no it just no it, not for me no mm. so I was just happy to like do what I really wanted to do exactly. for a long time and my mum was like 18 then you can start doing your acting stuff um so yeah yeah. yeah. No, that's really good. <laughs> intro into how I got into it. Yeah. No, I really like it. Um, because we our first ever episode was on like following your passion in mm. a difficult world. And we were saying, like, you know, whether it's stuff like this, whether it's podcasting or music or acting, that kind of like what you mentioned, especially at a young age, you're sort of like told, like, oh, like yeah. acting's a hobby or yeah. music creation is a like, hobby. I remember people at school would um you know, we had to choose GCSE. Mm. People were like, oh, I'll just do acting because it's easy. Or drama. Yeah, yeah, drama, yeah. And I remember, like, many times was I like, beefing people. <laughs> on <laughs> GCSEs, because I was like, take this role. Because <laughs> people were like, not putting any effort oh, in and whatever. Man. And um, yeah, because it was not seen as like that important. And I think even if you are like, I don't know, some tech dude or... Mm. Whatever. I think you really need those social skills. Definitely. You know, come from drama and doing those class, uh, drama lessons um, and being able to talk to people and having a personality, not being a brick wall. So, I think it's, but it's true. Though, no, it's true, it's true. They're, they're so smart. Mm. You know, this, that and that. Having a conversation with them, you're like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that ended quick. So, um, so you know, even if you don't want to um, do acting, I think it's important mm. uh, for other skills. Mm. Um, and yeah, it, w- it was a bit like hard because there wasn't anyone to really like mm. be like, oh, there are these options. It's like, you know, well, you know, English degree, you know, maths, mm-hmm. UCAS, da da da. Um, so I had to kind of like find my way, and luckily I had really good drama teachers. Shout out, Miss Dida <laughs> and Miss Highway. <laughs> Love you. Uh, but- <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's very hard. You've got to know that you want to do mm. it. You've got to know that like, if you don't do this, I ain't doing anything else. Exactly. Uh, and that's how I feel like you're able to like push through. Um, yeah. When, when, when your kind of passion, you needs to be kind of nurtured. Mm. Um, yeah. Lost my train of thought, but yeah. No, 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 that's yeah. true. That's true. <laughs> and I think like you mentioned, it's not something that you sort of like, well, you're, like, you're not going to be like Oscar winning like straight mm. out of the bat you're going to develop your craft and figure yeah. out you know what works well and what doesn't I mean it does depend like you do have people like if your dad's a freaking director whatever mm. dude, then you're more likely to probably get on the Oscar <laughs> winning like film do you know what I mean Um, but it does take work it is I always say like if you want to be an actor you've got to know that it's a long term thing mm. you know it's a career that's how I like to view it mm. and that it's going to take that work but that's part of the fun that you're going to work a bit, going to be difficult, but you're going to have the best time and feel fulfilled. Mm. Um, you know, and if you're not ready to go on that journey or that path, and but you want to do performance, then maybe be a reality star. Yeah. Maybe that's like an <laughs> easier way to no. get into it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you got to know that, like, listen, mm. it's this or nothing. Mm. Like when I... When I was auditioning uh, for drama school, uh, I was working at Waitress for like nine months, yeah. And they put me on uh, the deli section oh. with the cheeses. Uh. I hate cheese. <laughs> I hate it. Every fiber in my bin. Um, and then they're like, putting me in fish. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I don't get into drama school. I'm quitting. I don't care. I don't care. Even if I get in, great. But if I if I don't get in, mm. we're not doing waitress for another nine months. We're figuring something yeah. out. Do you know what I mean? Um, acting wise. So yeah. No, yeah, no, definitely. Sometimes it's just taking that that leap of faith. Yeah. Just believing in yourself. Yeah, you gotta be like, you know what? I I always say, do it first, you get it later. Mm. So I'd rather I'd rather um go full steam and say that you know what? I tried it. 
Mm. You know, I dip my toe in and move the whole damn foot. <laughs> and, um, and, and you know what? I didn't work out, but that's fine. At least I tried it. Yeah. I've, you know, been able, but I think there's nothing worse than being like looking back and you're like, oh, I should have done that. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? No, so it. true. So true. No, definitely. Um, I guess we're going to go on to the next question. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, this one is a bit of a tough one. Okay. Uh, now, I'm going to start off with a bit of an introduction because uh, these guys know, and hopefully by the time this is out, um, our gaming episode. So we have a gaming segment called okay. Game On where we talk about the world of gaming. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, we we previously spoke that yes. you are in a video game. Yes. Um, could you let us, our audience know which video game that you are in? It. <laughs> <laughs> No, you can tell I don't play games <laughs> in every sense of the word. Um, I was in Age of Empire. Yeah. African Royals. It was like Definitive Edition 2. I can't believe I remember that. That was like two years ago. Um, which was great, which is so much fun. Because I've always wanted to do mm. a game. I want to do more. Mm. Um, but yeah, I've never I've never actually played this game, but it was really cool because you can really just play. Mm. And um yeah, I'm but getting to play a Nigerian character as well because I mostly do just my own like accent and stuff mm. like that. I haven't really had many roles that come through where it's um Nigerian, which is strange. Um but yeah, it was really nice to explore that path and um yeah, and have like authority in the mm-hmm. game and you know, and because you don't see that you don't see any of the game mm. before before you record it. Like um the I want to say the director was um calling in, dining in from uh San one of the Sands of San Francisco, San Diego, of maybe Sacramento. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> where the headquarters is. <laughs> So he was dining in and okay. we'd just be like, okay, say like this or mm. a bit more, um, a bit more slow, a bit more authority, a bit mm. deeper. Um, so you get to see the game, got to really imagine. I kind of watched a little bit of gameplay okay. on YouTube and stuff just to kind of get an idea of okay. the world. Okay. Um, but yeah, it was so much fun. It's just, I feel like with games, you can really just push it. Mm. You know, I think more is, more is best, mm. you know. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun and I hope to do more. I mean, okay. do. Yeah, we hope yeah. to, we hope to see you more. Yeah, <laughs> but no, I think that's really cool. And I think kind of like what you're saying before about dipping your toes into mm. things you've never tried before. Like yeah. you've never done gaming before. You did it. You really enjoyed it. Yeah. You're, you're looking to go back. Exactly. Like, yeah. like there's so many things in acting maybe that I wouldn't do or, you know, that I can't, I can't really, people ask, would you ever do this? Would you ever do like, you know, would you ever do a new scene or something like that? You know what I mean? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I mm. haven't, I need to talk about it. I need mm. to like see if it's, essential to the storyline mm. or like certain characters or roles like would you play you know a murderer things mm. like that and I think it's until you get the script you get the kind of content mm. it's like I don't know yet um but I I'm open to it yeah, I think that's a good you know place to be good mm. way to be yeah yeah no definitely I think sort of being open to the opportunities yeah that come to you is, is so so true yeah so important yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> to win it <laughs> to win it <laughs> Um, but yeah, let's go on to the next question. Um, now, this could be hard. This could be a hard one. Because uh, I was going to ask you, what, what has uh, been your favourite moment in acting? But I'm actually going to sort of add like a, like a criteria to this, so okay. to speak. Um, because I think a lot of the time, um, from not only like previous discussions we've had on the podcast, but from mm-hmm. events I've attended and stuff, like there is that tendency to for people to think like, oh, like, someone's like like it's, it's great that you mentioned it in the intro you know like it wasn't that you were six, like this successful when you started you yeah. sort of grew your craft you sort of tried new things things like that but sometimes people sort of feel like I guess where the where you are now and like where you used to be or like where that person that person may be where you used to be and they can't see like how to get where you are now um so I wanted to ask if there's like a moment where something seemed at the time like a big failure like everything had gone wrong and then it like sort of turned out actually it taught you like the biggest lesson ever or like it turned into like mm. a turn around and actually it turned out it was the best thing that could have ever happened to you. Yeah, probably last year. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, I so I was ill for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I say that a month and a bit. And then I kind of was on and off just being ill, mm. which when I had to take time off. Mm. Um, And like at the start of the year, things just weren't going well, like I just wasn't getting parts that I wanted or getting the opportunity to audition for things um, that I thought I could do. Um, so I took a break. Then I was ill. Then I was like trying to get back onto it. Um, 
yeah, no, yeah, last year, it, it just wasn't my year. Mm. And I think I started off the year not in the right mentality. I was very much like, normally I will plan and say, this is what I aim for. This is what I'm working towards to give me some mm. sort of direction. Mm. And last year I was just a bit like, yeah, I don't give a shit. Don't get sorry, let me. No, 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 you can say, um, say. <laughs> I don't give a like whatever, like it's gonna happen, what like whatever happens, happens. Mm. I think that just threw me off Kinta. Mm. Um, so it made me very frustrated mm. and like a bit angry and just a bit um yeah, very frustrated and just very irritable. Mm. And to to get into roles, to get into character, you kind of your energy kind of I feel like has to be quite open and has to be quite um centered Mm -hmm. um and i think it's uh we me and my friends went on holiday and it was just so nice to be at peace Mm -hmm. and be relaxed and not be worrying that like have i got an email like Mm -hmm. have i got this come through um and that was like september october that was really quite late in in the year but just when we go like i'm just so blessed and happy to be healthy and Mm -hmm. alive right now um so why am i stressing and pushing myself too much it was almost like um I was pressuring myself to be like you should be here you should Mm -hmm. be there and I think just having that moment to reflect be on a beach uh (laughs) and just be like well this is great I feel very at peace when I came back to London I was like you know what I'm in a new like space I'm in a new kind of um energy mm. and uh yeah that was a turning point mm-hmm. and then boom 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 commercial started coming through um opportunities and stuff and I just and I think I just like to enjoy things more yeah. and stop putting a lot of pressure and um kind of yeah a lot of pressure on it and, mm. it, and the things started being better I don't know if that's answering your question no 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 yes yeah, 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 um, yeah I think sometimes we just we kind of feel like we've got to do this by this mm-hmm. and setting like time limits and also when you see your friends doing really well mm. um, part of you is like oh my god they're doing this what am I doing I'm sitting down I, you know <laughs> I, mean? like, I should be off there doing it and it's like hey, come on, mm. breathe. everyone's journey is different mm. and I think that's um time will help with that like as mm. you get older and I'm saying this is if I'm like 50 <laughs> um, and have like kids <laughs> but I think it's just um as you grow up and become uh, at one with yourself and know mm. yourself better mm. you know that it's not a competition it's just you know it's your own journey and, and that's fine yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah no that's really powerful I think it's all like we mentioned um, like we mentioned it on a previous episode I mean it wasn't to do with like careers and stuff it was actually like dating while at uni but we were saying there's like yeah so it was all about <laughs> we were saying like in that one like I guess we were saying there's an expectation of oh like you have to, so like to be successful, you have to sort of like be in a relationship and it has to be like a healthy relationship. Then you have to like have your own house. You have to drive your own car. You have to, if you're not have your own business, then you're successful in your career. If you're not successful in your career, then you're like a freelancer on the side. Um, and it's, it's, you know what it is? It's the hustle. Everyone's it's the like, hustle. Gotta it's get the, on the grind. Exactly. Gotta get on the hustle. <laughs> Chill. Will you just take it down or not? Exactly. No, it's so true. Yeah. And I feel like, um, like we've been saying it a lot recently, but there's essentially like being a young person now, especially like, I guess with things with COVID relaxing and not everything not being as stressful. I mean, life still can be very stressful, but yeah. like, yeah. But it's not, I think what we were saying is like, it's really good because you're at a moment in time where um, no one else, like you are, your actions will primarily affect you. You're only dependent mm-hmm. on yourself. Exactly. It's like, if you sort of, in that mindset of okay you're in a relationship and you're now paying a mortgage because you've got a house and you're now sort of paying deposits towards your car because you took money out and it's like all of these things then you won't have time to sort of develop yourself or like develop your hustle because you'll then be like okay well I went against I guess society or like my expectations on being successful but then it's like I'm now reached it and it's just like well now I've got all these other things that I didn't expect I honestly feel like, yeah, we should, like, the moment where there isn't no responsibilities, because I haven't got half of those things mm. you mentioned. I'm literally, I've got the driving license thing on my phone being like, go, you need to learn how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> we are approaching that. Um, we're not too close to 30. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Relax. Um, but yes, and and I think, um, I just, I just think, you know, work on yourself and mm. just in, enjoy learning more about yourself and, and discovering and developing because even the thing about like dating in uni and it's like 
Do people even know what a healthy relationship is? Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? Let's stop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's take it easy. Let's, you know, I think you can only either give love mm. that when you love yourself, mm. you know yourself. And I think that would be applied to your career. Mm. Um, you're comfortable with yourself, comfortable with having a body on the mm. with who you are as a person and, and how you fit in your friendship group and things mm. like that. Yeah. Mm. No, definitely. I think the, the most powerful moment is when you sort of like know um, like what you want to do in life. You know, you know what to expect, like I said, whether it's with relationships or your career, um, knowing like, I guess, especially depending on like the type of career you do, like knowing that certain things aren't expected. So like if you go into an office and your manager's treating you rubbish, you sort of already know that, no, like my manager's doing a poor job or this organization is actually really bad because that's sort of the standard of like what work should be like. Um, yeah. I think it's so true. Yeah, it's like being able to recognize that mm. and to like, you know, notice it and be like, you know, do I feel like I deserve this? Do I feel like I can continue like this? If not, change. Exactly. You know? And I think, um, listen to my friends because they like, they've had some times where they've not been at work. I'm like, they mm. just sleep. Mm. And I know it's so easy to say, but I'm, but I do feel like, you know, you know yourself. Mm. You, you know that like this behavior you, couldn't tolerate and stuff so mm. do what's always best in best for your interest you mm. know no 100 yeah. percent um and it's sort of like like we mentioned before about like taking that leap of faith yeah like, they're, like we i don't know if you actually spoke it, well it won't be in the it might be on the podcast but essentially like um i mentioned it before that um i went to a speaker event and this guy was uh he started a business on prosthetics and hopefully maybe one day he'll be on the podcast as well but he was saying that and regards so he was a design student mm. and he was saying that third year uh, he said final year students when it comes to the dissertation especially design students some of them create like amazing work they do like really innovative things they're things that really could get a business made out of them but most of them never touch it um they never will like exp- they were just like it's for a course like you know it was just for an assignment i'm just gonna like do the assignment graduate and then i'm just gonna work as a designer in a company and he was saying no like if you have an idea and you've got it for coursework and you know You've spoken to people about it. You've spoken to your lecturers and they're like, yeah, this could be a business. Like, do it. Like, yeah. go for it. Um, he was saying that, you know, the worst thing that you can do is wait. And then whether or not it's, you know, I'm not saying every university is like stealing ideas from people, but like whether or not your, like, your university does the same idea or like three years later, you, then, you, fi- yeah, you find out someone else around the world has come out and done it um, because I've forgotten who said it. Someone basically was saying that like the the thing that people need to think about is not every time it's like someone's trying to steal your idea, but they were saying you have to think about that, especially like with how big the internet is, how much access everyone has to the internet, that if you put like the same group of people in a room and you give them the same sort of resources, they're sort of taught the same things, they'll eventually come to the same conclusions. And they were saying that, you know, you could have this idea, but if you're not going to sort of like move on it or not even for like a money thing, like even if you feel like actually this is no generally a really bad issue and someone should be doing something, if you could do something on it, then go ahead, try it, like do it. Just you got to be brave. That's exactly. Like, I feel like if there's any motto, be brave. Mm. I'm like, people are more worried about themselves mm. than they are about you. And if they are worried more about you, they've got issues. And that's their, <laughs> that's their thing. But people are more concerned about themselves. Mm. So why not try? You've you got to really, um, and this is the thing that does take time as well. Is push yourself and be brave mm-hmm. and be like, fuck it, gonna do it. Exactly. You know? No, definitely, definitely mm-hmm. true. Um, the last question before we go on to uh, passing the mic, where uh, I won't actually, because I can't actually pass the mic over to her, man. Yeah, this is attached. This is attached. <laughs> but, um, but we'll be passing the mic over to her, um, is essentially for anyone who's interested in, it can be, I guess it, it works for like anyone who's not just interested in acting, mm-hmm. but essentially, it was for anyone who's interested in acting or they want to go into the art and maybe, you know, they've been told whether it's by parents or friends or society that, you know, following that as, you know, follow, sort of what we were saying before that it's a hobby, it's not a career. Um, what would be like, you can give three, you can give one, but what would be a piece of advice to them? I think no, for sure, mm. you want to do it because it's not easy. Mm. Um, and if you know that you could do a job where you could be equally as happy, and less stressful, <laughs> do it. <laughs> but um, I would say, you know what? Fuck yeah, do it. Um, I would say look into like your local theatres mm. or um drama schools and see if they do any short courses. 
or Saturday schools, anything like that, to kind of get yourself involved and just have like a taste of, of what it's like. Um, and all the advice I'm going to give is providing like money as mm. well, because the government has obviously like stripped back on social check mm. funding and things like that. So, um, yes. But if you can, like, in school, get involved in um, productions. Also now with like, TV, YouTube, yeah. there's so many like master classes, there's so many people talking about things and exercises or uh, things that you can do at home as well that you don't probably need to spend on like short courses and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's a, a way to start is getting yourself involved at any type of level and to see if this is, you know, for, for you and just to get that experience. Mm. I think that's what really um helped me um and you know if you can't do that then i think watching watching shows watching theater mm. um lots, lots of these theaters do things uh within the community mm. um projects that i think are also worth getting involved with mm-hmm. um and just seeing what you like and what type of performer or person you you'd like to be mm. um but yes is that is that good advice what that, else? That, that's, that's good advice if you've got more we, we can keep it going we can keep yeah, it going kind of <laughs> Then of what I did, um, which is just, just apply to so many different like company things and theatre groups and stuff like that. Um, and you know, if you want to, drama school is also an option um to 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 go into and or audition for um a foundation course as well, which is only one year, just to see if it's for you and um stuff like that. Yes, yes. Mm. If not, I'll send some more. but no I think that's really true Um, it sort of links to advice that I was given um, because I went to this cool event uh, and I'll include the description down below Um, but there was this really cool event at Imperial War Museum which is all about like war games and how warfare is depicted in gamings and like the different I guess how there's like your typical like Call of Duty shooter where you're sort of like this military person who's trying to take out the bad guys. Mm. But then there were some that sort of show like, no, it shows it from the fe- uh, the side of like people affected by football warfare. So I forgot the name That's of the game. Right, right now. Yeah. Um, and it was like, there's, I'd never heard of this game before. There was one, um, which hopefully the name will appear somewhere. But um, yeah, just like... Magic. <laughs> Um, but they, um, that game, I forgot their name, but it was a basically you play as the husband. It's like a text game. So it's um, just like a series of messages. You then pick, like, I guess what you say and it leads you down a certain path. But it was about um, a husband who's communicating with his wife who's stuck in Syria. And it's about her journey from essentially getting from Syria to mainland Europe. So you as the husband essentially decide her fate. So the things that you decide on, like, whether or not she, like, goes to certain people, whether she talks to certain people, you know, it sort of does that, mm-hmm. like, that that mindset. Um, but there are also games on, like, people who who are, I guess, a part of warfare, but, like, looking at them from the angle of, like, they weren't, they didn't sign up because, you know, they wanted to fight type thing. Um, so, like, there was one game, I think it's called Eleven Eleven, where it's it's based on World War I, um, and it's based on, like, two aspects of... Um, so like one you play as a German engineer, I think. You play as a German engineer who was looking who's looking for his son. His son joined the war. He hasn't heard from him for ages. So he signed up to find his son. The other one you play as, I think, American reporter who basically joined the army to impress this girl. Um and it's showing essentially like their stories, sort of showing, I guess, the wider impact of war. And sort of like I was saying that not everyone sort of joins war for, for war for just for fighting um so yeah so i definitely recommend it's on until may it's really good you also get to do some like retro they have like old gaming consoles so that's another another shout um but uh they had like a i think it was in october they had like a event where it was like a live event and they had this person called ellie O'Seely wood i apologize if i said her name wrong um but she uh she's like a she does a lot of game presenting she's worked with bafta um and i just asked her like i was just like you know I, I do the podcast. I really love like video games. I'd love to someday, you know, get into presenting and doing video games like that. I was like, what advice do you have for me? And she was just like, just go like any opportunity, just take it. She said, go to like small studios, get in contact with them, do interviews with them. Um, get in contact with like if there's a YouTuber who's in London who who's got like a following and they're happy to be on the podcast, get in touch with them. I think it's also worth probably um sorry to interrupt. No, no. Like shadowing. Mm. If you can like shadow or just be like, listen, oh, I don't mind being a runner or something. Because a lot of like a lot of acting, a lot of all this kind of stuff is like it is who you know. Mm. Um 
But also it's just like if sometimes a friend of a friend might think of you and be like, actually, oh, what, this guy, who, you know, yeah, yeah, the really cute one. Yeah, yeah, but him. Yeah, he'd be really great for this. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But it's kind of a lot like that. And it's mm. once you start doing those kind of things of maybe just helping out on, on this presenting thing or, you know, whatever, you start to build those contacts mm. and then you can kind of get yourself into it. Like um, another bit of advice for acting wise is um, if you want to be like a runner on like a short film or production, mm-hmm. that I remember I was a um, a runner um, for the Shakespeare Globe. Oh. Um, so I, yeah, for a week, uh so just to get like because yeah school was like yo do some do some work experience like <laughs> ugh, <I'll do> it. <laughs> hey you damn it mm. um but i did it and, I, and you know and it was and i got to talk to some of the actors and stuff and um you know yeah it was long as hell but i remember it was a good experience to, get to talk to them and mm. you know um and i remember i was working in the office mm-hmm. doing like looking at the actors files and stuff like that so then you've got like GDPR, whatever, so don't, you know. <laughs> but, like, you know, different agencies mm. that you could write mm. to. Or um, I literally was working in the office, but, like, casting was. Mm. So I could be like, hello, are you an actor? <laughs> I'm an actor. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, yeah. You got to be a bit savvy with it, mm. you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I definitely agree, uh, and it sort of links to like a show. I mean, it's not, it's not based on truth. Oh, jeez, man, I forgot again. Like usually, most of the time, I forget stuff. So like, yeah, yeah. It, it, or like it magic, it's it just like come out like that, and it'll be like as if it was like one thing. Um, <laughs> and it's gonna go boom. <laughs> you did boom. Boom. There, see, look, yeah. see, look, it's going to be there. But um, there was a show that sort of was, was about that. Um, yeah. It's on Amazon. It's I know it's, my sister was saying it's like inspired from uh, like this French show that sort of did the same thing. But it was about like a casting... Call My Agent. Call My yeah. Agent. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, but, but it's, it's good. It, it's really good. Um, honestly, man, the amount of like, stuff I have to catch up on. I've just finished watching um, Gangs of London season two. I need to watch it. Banya, and I want to watch uh, Last of Us. See, I've played the game. Uh, well, I've, well, I haven't played the game. I watched someone play the game because for certain games, these guys, for certain games, they're, they're they're a bit too. They get the heart racing a bit too much for me. If I, I can watch someone play it. Gameplay from Last of Us, I couldn't do it. No nah, man, it, it's it's intense. Yeah, I'm, you're in for a treat. I, I won't spoil it, okay, but you're, yeah, you're in for a treat. Also, because Pedro Pascal is yeah. Oh, God. And ever since Game of Thrones, I'm in love with that man. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like. If you need a wife, like, come on. He, he, you heard it here first. You heard it. If Pedro, if, you, if you're watching, if you're watching. He said he's the internet's daddy. I'm so, like, he said it himself. Something like that. <laughs> so, anyway. Meeting Zippy on. Uh, but, yeah, no. Um, In that show, like, they show that, you know, like you said, like being working within net casting agencies, or you know, um, being a runner, like you sort of build those connections, and then you can sort of be like, oh, you know, this company's they've been trying to find someone for this role, they've been looking high and low, they couldn't find anyone. You'd be like, well, yeah, no, I could do it. No, hundred percent. I think it's just dedication. Like even writing to people, writing to casting, writing to production, mm. be like, I'll work on it, or even writing to cast directors to be casting. Uh, is it casting assistant? Yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. Please don't hear me. <laughs> just to help out. So then you're getting yourself involved. Mm. That's the main thing. Definitely. Put in there. Exactly. No, mm. definitely.